Hi folks, Charlie Shelton here on my own channel for the very first time at Zippity Doodad. Thank you for joining us. We are here at the media event for the Boysenberry Festival tasting and a preview of the Redone Knots Hotel. So we're gonna try several of the foods that are coming to the Boysenberry Festival, which opens on March 8th. Let's jump into it. Betty Boys and first time Betty Boys and has come to Knott's Berry Farm. It will be launched this year. So Betty, you have to watch for Betty. There'll be secret Betty's throughout the park. 19, well, like 1944, there was signage on Beach Boulevard before it became Beach Boulevard. So they had it done. We resurrected the sign and the image, and then we said, why are we not, you know, so, and then we found out secret inside the company was called Betty Boys. So we recreated her like this. We put it on this and we also put on a shirt. And then what we're going to do is we have implanted Betty around the park. Where around the park? I don't know. <laughs> It could be nowhere, it could be anywhere, but that's the story of Betty Boys. It's going to be fun. All right, so first up for the drinks, we have the boysenberry rum runner. I love tiki drinks, so a rum runner plus boysenberry, which is like objectively one of the best flavors. Uh, this is going to be really good. Let's try it out. Oh, it's strong. That's very strong, which is rare for a theme park cocktail. Um, I know we're here in the, uh, the ballroom of the hotel, but I imagine it's going to be very similar to what they serve in the park. Um, Knott's has really been upping it with their cocktails and their beer selection recently, so this is, this is pretty good. It's not... It's a little more rum forward than I would like, um, but the boysenberry punch is welcome and it surprisingly works well with the rum flavor. All right, let's see what's next. All right, so we've got another drink here. This is the boysenberry IPA. This is new. They've had the boysenberry wheat beer for a long time and it's honestly one of my favorites of anywhere, like not just of theme parks, but like it's just a fantastic beer, but now they've got several other offerings. Hmm. No, I don't think so. Um, it's not IPA enough to be a real IPA. It's not boysenberry enough to be a boysenberry. Whereas the boysenberry wheat, like it really comes through and the, the fruity notes complement the wheat beer aspect. Um, these seem to almost detract from each other. Like I don't, I don't want the bitterness in my boysenberry, but I also don't want the uh, boysenberry in my bitterness, I guess. So um, we're gonna jump right into the food. Now, rather than going and getting everything piecemeal like I tried to do with the drinks, we're gonna do everything. And this is just a huge, I'm gonna show you guys what this looks like. Look at this spread, this is incredible. And it's an entire buffet all the way along the wall over there. That whole wall is covered in buffet items. So we've got a lot to get through. This is the food from the upcoming Boysenberry Festival, which opens on March 8th, 2024. So first up, we have the peach and cheese burrata caprese salad with a boysenberry dressing. At any buffet, I wouldn't usually go for the salad, but it is boysenberry, so. It's fine. It's a salad. Um, you know, having burrata is a nice touch. But, like I said, I wouldn't really go for the salad. Like, it's nice, especially for a pass holder or somebody when you can want something lighter you can move into this, but I don't think, uh, you know, if you're at Knott's, you really want to blow it out. You want to get the fun, fair food. And we've got a lot of that. So that's what I would go for. Next up, and this one's weird. This is uh, Spam Musubi with a boysenberry soy sauce. 
I'll never turn down spam masubi, but uh, ooh, sticking to my thing. I'll never turn it down, but like you can see, it is. Um, you can see it's slightly purple soy sauce. So that it's just such an interesting choice. That's okay. It's a little bit of boysenberry, a little bit. Um, you know, not a lot, but I, I think having sweet berry flavor with my teriyaki spam would probably be a weird combo. So it's just subtle enough where like, it's still a good spam musubi and it's not <laughs> overpowering on the boysenberry, which is nice. Um, next up, we have roasted vegetable lettuce wrap with boysenberry tahini sauce. And this one looks like, like the tahini sauce I got to do myself. And so it was like an attack from Ivan Ooze for anybody old enough to remember the Power Rangers movies. But like, it's, uh, it's very, very purple, very fun. Mm. Hmm. Again, kind of weird to have the sweet in with the savory of the tahini, but uh, it works. I mean, it's not my favorite thing I've ever had, but you know, when you want something boysenberry themed, that's again a little bit lighter. I would take that over the salad, I think, because it's a little more fun and unique than than just a salad with boysenberry dressing that you can have at home. This is still vegetables and still light and fun, but uh, you know, a little bit more interesting. Okay, next up we have the chicken tikka masala with boysenberry curry sauce over steamed white rice. I love chicken tikka masala. Look at this. Hmm. I'm not getting any boysenberry. Like it's a it's a good chicken masala, but it's not uh I like the curry just completely erases everything in its path. Oh man. Man. Every pair of pants I put on. Every single pair of pants. I missed the shirt, but I'm sure I'll get it. Uh, so yeah, it's it's fine as a as a chicken masala, but um, I'm just not getting any boysenberry with it at all, which is, you know, not really what I want. Like, it would be fine if it was just a regular theme park, but here I want the boysenberry stuff from the boysenberry festival. So, okay, next we have, you know, that boysenberry is growing in the beer. Um, still not a great IPA, but the boysenberry flavor is growing. It's not as impeded as I initially thought. Maybe the uh, effervescence is wearing off and the boysenberry is coming through. So next up, we have the boysenberry pulled pork over a pastel de elote. I, I'm sure I messed that up. Uh, but let's try the boysenberry pulled pork. What? There's, again, not a lot of boysenberry flavor. Like, they make a boysenberry barbecue sauce. Why is there not... There doesn't seem to be a lot of boysenberry flavor in this. Oh, that pesto de elote, that... It's, it's like a sweet cornbread. Like a cornbread cake. Hmm. That's great. That's really good. Yeah, like, this is, again... A really good dish, but it's not um, not very boysenberry. Like it's it's great for what it is, and I'm very rarely disappointed with the food at Knott's. But like, I kind of want more of the boysenberry flavor. Like in the way I have a little too much boysenberry coming through, I kind of want that overpowering boysenberry. And this doesn't really have a whole lot. So it's not that it's bad. It's just not super boysenberry forward. But for what it is. 
The, uh, the corn cake is great, and this is very similar to my favorite thing from the Peanuts weekend, which was a cornbread funnel cake topped with uh, uh, pulled pork that was fantastic. It's not boysenberry themed, but it was just an incredible theme park food. And this, again, very good, just not, not thematic enough for me, I think. Uh, next, we have the boysenberry barbecue beef barbacoa with mac and cheese and green onions. I didn't do the green onions because I didn't see them. But I like IPA. So if you don't like an IPA, you hmm. Again, not a lot of boysenberry, but very good barbecue beef. Wow, really good. That would make a fantastic sandwich. And then uh, with the mac. That works really well together. Um, there's more boysenberry in this one because I keep feeling the seeds get stuck in my teeth where I haven't felt that anywhere else. Um, but this is this is really good on its own. Mm. And the mac and cheese is the perfect complement to that beef. It's slightly sweet, uh, being barbacoa. It's slightly sweetened barbecue beef, not as not as smoky as you would expect. And so, this stewed meat is is really intense and kind of cuts through the heaviness of the mac and cheese, but that gives it some some substance and some body behind it. Well, that's great. I could eat a whole plate of that. I shouldn't, but I could eat a whole plate of that. That's great. Okay. Next up. Next up, we have the blackened shrimp stir fry with lemon rice and boysenberry teriyaki. So this is another, you know, boysenberry something over over rice. Oh, that lemon rice. Hmm, that's fun. I like that. It's very subtle hint of lemon, just enough to like offset it, but it's also not sour or anything. Like it's just a little bit of lemon flavor, but not not overpowering. That's nice. Let's try these uh, shrimp here. Ew. That's good. That's really good. That's um sweet teriyaki. Like again, hard to place the boysenberry, but it's just a nice sweet teriyaki that I splashed all over my face. That's that's really nice. I like this a lot. Again, a great dish. This is a little more boysenberry than the rest, but um, just just really nice. You can't make a bad choice for any of the boysenberry food festivals, festival foods. It's not, you know, super boysenberry-ish, but it's all really good food. So now we've seen all the foods that are coming to the boysenberry festival. Uh, let's move over to the 30 Acres Kitchen foods. These are from the new restaurant at the Knott's Hotel. They just recently redid it. They refurbished everything. It looks great and very clean and modern. And they have a new restaurant called 30 Acres Kitchen that is getting a lot of attention and it's very, very good. So they've got some of the foods out here for us to try. We are gonna start with the Berry Farm Burger. And they just have little sliders for us. So this is like a little cheeseburger with onions and a uh, barbecue sauce. A lot of bread on this little slider. Um, this is this is good. It's got a little uh, some some fried onions and some cheese, a little burger. Um, it's good. The the boysenberry sauce, whatever that is, and I'll look it up and put it in the description here. It's good. And like, you need a good signature burger, you know. Um, it's it's just a good solid barbecue burger and it's not you know yucky frozen meat like that's actually pretty good whether it's frozen or not it, it tastes good enough so that's really all I care about uh, next we're gonna try the salad this is the boysenberry barbecue chicken salad so I assume again with a boysenberry dressing uh, barbecue chicken dressing
Hmm. Boy, that chicken is smoky. That's the first barbecue thing that I've had that's like actually smoky, as though it was on a barbecue. There's a lot going on. Beans, corn, creamy dressing, spinach, uh, baby greens, barbecue chicken, cheese. There's a lot, oh, bacon. Like, there's just a lot going on in this cup. The grilled corn is nice and provides a pop of sweetness. But other than that, like, everything just kind of melts together. Like, the beans kind of, you know, emulsify and tie everything together. And not a lot is standing out because it just becomes one unified flavor. But that one flavor is pretty good. I know I, um, I know I was complaining about the salad earlier, but honestly, I think I like the burrata salad better, like the boysenberry vinaigrette. The boysenberry comes through a little bit more, and that's, you know, they said it's a boysenberry salad, so like, if that's what we're going for, the uh, peach burrata salad, the peach burrata salad comes through with the boysenberry a little bit more, so I kind of, I would lean towards that, but there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, it's a fine salad. Uh, last up here from the hotel, we have the boysenberry chipotle barbecue chicken pizza. And this is beautiful. There's lots of chicken on this. I mean, I, I grabbed a really good slice, but like, still. Um, it's okay. I see there's literally a boysenberry on this. Like, there's there's actually a boysenberry on this pizza, which is great. I'll show you guys right here. There's a full-size canned boysenberry on my pizza, so I can't complain about that. This one definitely brings the boysenberry flavor, but they're, like, cooked in, so it's almost like cobbler barbecue pizza. This is really fun. I don't know if I would automatically gravitate towards a boysenberry barbecue chicken pizza, but I'm glad that I had it and now I would have it again because it's so unique and fun and the chipotle kind of just makes everything roastier and darker and very lovely. I enjoyed that a lot. Next up we have the boysenberry mojito and the it's a mojito um, made with boysenberry concentrate mix so it kind of all sits to the bottom. But uh, if you give it a little mix here. Oh, that's nice. So I saw they make it with mojito mix, which I'm usually like, uh, you know, on these kind of cocktails, I, I would hope that it was like fresh muddled. Um, but using the mojito mix is like, okay, I guess. But it comes together really well. You know, for sitting at the hotel, at the end of the day, um, drinking your your mojito, this you could do worse. This is very very pleasant. I know there's some mixologists out there who are gonna give me the side eye right now, but um, for what it is, it's a lot of fun, and and it's not too strong on anything except the boysenberry, which is what I want. I really want to be, you know, smacked in the face with a boysenberry, and I I a lot of the stuff we've had has not come through with a lot of boysenberry. So the fact that this comes through really hard with the boysenberry concentrate, that's fantastic. Now this next one that we're gonna uh, do is called the boysenberry bourbon smash. Now this is the one that I saw on the table and I thought that's gonna be me. I'm, you know, bourbon, I, any kind of whiskey is, is my jam. So the fact that it's boysenberry and bourbon, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. I, it's kind of a, a takeoff on a uh, Dublin Mule. So it's got, you know, ginger beer and, and then bourbon and honey and boysenberry. It's got a little bit of everything. That's really good. And the boysenberry is so sweet that it offsets that herbal spiciness from the ginger beer, which is what usually turns me off from mules of any kind, is that I want, I, I don't really like ginger in my drink because it just overpowers whatever it's with. You only get subtle notes of the, you know, 
um, uh, whiskey or anything else that may be in there, which is why it's fine for vodka, because vodka doesn't have as many discernible notes. It just kind of melds into whatever you put it into. But with bourbon, I want to taste the bourbon. I want it to be fun. You know, I, I want it. I want to know that I'm drinking bourbon. And this one, because the boysenberry is taking the heat from the ginger, it kind of allows the bourbon to slip through the middle. This is this is very nice. I feel like if I went to, if I, you know, next time I come to this, the bar at 30 Acres, this is going to be uh, the drink that I order. And it's served in this cute little can, which you can't take home, and I already asked them. I can't buy them, they're just for the restaurant, but this cute little milk can. And uh, this, this has got me written all over it. This is awesome. Okay, <clears throat> we're gonna finish strong. We have a bevy of desserts to dive into. First, we're going to try the vegan boysenberry chia parfait. So it's got boysenberry jam on the bottom and then chia on top of it and fresh fruit. I love chia seeds. Like, I know it's kind of weird that it's a dessert, but like, I really just, I love chia seeds in anything. It's like a fun vanilla boysenberry goo around the um, chia seeds, or maybe that's just how it all comes together. That's really great. Mmm. Wow. Well, color me shocked. That's the sleeper hit, man. Wow. It's creamy, it's vanilla. It's uh, the you know that texture of chia seeds where it's it's like um, when they've when they've swollen up and absorbed everything. It's just very fun, a very fun tactile sensation that I was not expecting, and the flavor is um, more than I more than I thought it could be with chia seeds. Like it's almost like a chia seed pudding on top of the boysenberry jam, which brings the tartness, and then the fresh blueberries and raspberries bring the bright acidity. That's that's really great. Um, no notes. That's awesome. Okay, next up, we're going to do the lemon bar with a boysenberry compote. And I, I don't usually go in for lemon bars, but we'll give it a shot. The crust is nice. I don't like lemon bars, so I know I'm gonna be biased. Not the biggest fan of lemon in a dessert. Like, that's not the flavor that I want in a dessert. Chocolate exists for a reason. And why we would try something like lemon, I don't know. So, it's not for me. Maybe somebody who really enjoys lemon might enjoy it more, but like the boysenberry and the whipped cream is not enough to save this. But again, that's just my opinion. Um, next up, speaking of we have chocolate in existence, we have the brownie bites and boysenberry parfait. So this is like, I don't know, whipped um, frosting pudding mousse? Hmm. It's sweet, but it's not super, um, the boysenberry isn't coming through. It's just kind of a sweet frosting. Let's try the boysenberry, or the uh, brownie bites. Hmm. Very chocolate. Very moist. Bordering on wet. Um, this isn't like the light crumbly kind of brownie. It's like the thick, intense, sticks to your teeth kind of brownie. But the cream is so light and fluffy, they kind of balance each other out. Um, Okay. I mean, it's fine. It's not. It's not my favorite thing in the world. Um, <clears throat> I know for a fact that they serve boysenberry pie at Knott's Berry Farm. So, like, you know, you would do better, I think, with that as a dessert because it's more iconic and it's better than this. And speaking of which, our next and our last entry is the boysenberry cobbler. Now, if this is like the pie, which you know, it's just a cobbler version. Um, that's, that's the best dessert you can have at Knott's Berry Farm. That's so good. 
it's just the pie filling with some crumbles on top. So like, if you ever eat a slice of the boysenberry pie and you think all I want is the filling and not the crust, if you leave that crusty edge on the plate, this is for you. This is more, more boysenberry filling and less of the crust. This is fantastic. But like, I'm also not shocked. This is what put knots on the map is the boysenberry and, and Cordelia knots boysenberry pie. Like this and the chicken, that's everything. That's why we're here today. Mm. Well, that was great. I am stuffed. Thank you so much for joining me. Please follow my brand new channel. Uh, I'm gonna have more videos from theme parks, from travel, from all over the place. I will be back here on March 8th for the kickoff of the Boysenberry Festival with even more new foods to try, and we hope to see you then. Thanks for stopping by.